He's enterprising, aggressive, young, bold, vicious. He'll do. A Clockwork Orange, one of Stanley Kubrick's most acclaimed and contentious films, one with an iconic protagonist, the delinquent Alex DeLarge, brought to life by the marvelous British actor Malcolm McDowell. It's undoubtedly the most remarkable role in McDowell's career, and in this video, we'll explore his process of becoming the unforgettable Alex, the torment, the joy, the trauma, and how he feels about the experience more than 50 years later. Stay tuned. A Clockwork Orange is the 1972 film, based on the book of the same name by author Anthony Burgess. While Burgess had to deal with two possible endings in his book, Kubrick had to deal with zero actors to play the protagonist in his movie. But when he saw Lindsay Anderson's film If, along came Malcolm McDowell. Uh, Stanley had just seen If. He saw it four times. He really loved the film. When he started to read the novel from the third page, he just saw my face all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> Tell me why. I don't know why. You'll have to ask him. Kubrick had found his Alex in McDowell, but where would McDowell find Alex in himself? In a moment of panic, McDowell resorted to an old friend, the director Lindsay Anderson, with whom he had worked two years prior. You know, I'm not a method type actor. So everything that I do is whatever happens at the moment. It's sort of in the moment, whatever inspiration I can get on the set. I was going to say inspiration and in whatever bog sense. You know, one's working on, on, on sort of with one's heart on one's sleeve, if you like. You know, I suddenly panicked. I've been working on the pre-production of this thing, the look of it, the all the whole thing for like five months. And I suddenly thought, I don't know how to play this part. I haven't got a clue. Nobody's actually talked about the part. We've talked about everything else, but who is he? So I just sort of panicked. I called my friend Lindsay Anderson, you know, who had directed If, and I said, Would you, could you read the script and, and, and talk to me about it? He said, oh, all right. So I gave him the script, and a couple of days later, I got a call. He said, you better come over. So I went over to see him. The first thing he said was, well, thank God I don't have to direct this. And I went, it's not your cup of tea. How do I do it? He goes, well, Malcolm, there's a scene in If, a close-up, when you open the doors of the gymnasium to be beaten by the prefects, and you look at them and you smile. He goes, that's how you play it. And I went, yes, brilliant piece of direction. And that's how I played it. We can say that the creation of Alex resulted from Anderson's help and the intense collaboration between McDowell and Kubrick. But McDowell seems to think there was something else, something intangible, one of those things that happen in a film. I couldn't find any realistic parallels to work in, within, you see. And one was playing this force, this evil force, if you like, and one had to make it um, a real person, in, in a sense, in a, a real personality. And um, I did find that difficult at the beginning. Bog and his holy angels in heaven <laughs> sent me the answer. I don't know how it happened. It just evolved, you know. Mm. I mean, the first day was terrifying, absolutely nightmarish. Mm. Um, we shot a scene in the hospital, the Ludovico hospital, where I'm having breakfast, and I hadn't really got a clue, mm. you know, what I was doing, really. Mm. I was basically saying the lines mm. and just hoping that it was right. Mm. And when we saw the rushes the next evening, Stanley said, we've got it, mm. you know, that's it. On the way home, I remember that I, I thought to myself, well, you know, what was it? I, I can't remember quite what, what I did do, you know. It's just one of those things that happens uh, mm. on a film. It, it's something that's impossible, really, to describe how you arrived at it. The answer is on the screen. Yeah. But if we take a closer look at how Kubrick guided Malcolm's preparation, maybe becoming Alex wasn't a product of movie magic. McDowell has told The Guardian, I spent nine months with Stanley before we started shooting, watching violent movies every day. They were the most horrendous films, concentration camps, bodies stacked up. He was thinking of using them in the treatment sequence when Alex is given aversion therapy. Kubrick was installing in Malcolm the mindset he wanted for his protagonist, and he included the actor in every part of Alex's construction, even the iconic look. Malcolm said, one day I asked Stanley what my friends the Droogs were going to look like. He said, what have you got? I said, the only thing in my car is my cricket bag. So I put my whites on. He asked what the groin protector was. And when I told him, he said, wear it on the outside. That became the look. 
The look isn't the only memorable part of the film that came from McDowell's creative mind. One of the most quintessential moments of the film was also the actress doing. A scene in the film uh, where Alex and his three droogs come in and rape uh, a writer's wife and beat the writer up. We arrived at the set, looked at the bare walls for three days. Um, we rehearsed various bits of the script that we had which weren't good enough. I mean, it just didn't, wasn't working for us. On the third day, Stanley said to me, can you dance? And I said, yes, why not, you know? I mean, I'm not a dancer, but I went into a sort of uh, soft shoe number and started to um, hum. Do -de -do, da -da -ba -de -ba -de -ba -ba -do -ba. And then started to sing, Singing in the Rain, because subconsciously I remembered that scene in the Gene Kelly film as being one of the happiest scenes I'd ever seen on the film. And it was right for the moment. And Kubrick took this immediately. Within mm -hmm. three hours, he had the rights of the song. Collaboration was a crucial factor in Malcolm McDowell's process. Here's what he said about Kubrick in the same interview. Is that he can create the atmosphere for creative work, which is very important. I mean, he takes an awful lot from his actors. He has to. His method of working is not um, to give you directions like you come in, you go from A to B and you sit down and you talk. Um, that would be impossible to do a film in that way. Um, totally impossible. Uh, his method is that we come in at 7 o'clock in the morning and we rehearse. Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse until we get the scene right. And by um, saying rehearse, I mean that everybody is there to throw in ideas. But collaboration doesn't mean the opposite of hierarchy. Stanley Kubrick was not shy about playing his director card. Stanley Kubrick knows what he wants and limitlessly explores his persuasion skills to get it, even if that puts his actors at risk. This attitude has made other stars feel conflicted about working with the auteur. For instance, Shelley Duvall, who played Wendy in The Shining, said working with Kubrick was almost unbearable. Malcolm McDowell never openly complained about the partnership, even though he endured much more than a fair share of consequences due to Stanley's insatiable search for realism. Malcolm has told The Guardian, in the scene where I'm being worked over by the police, the probation officer, played by Aubrey Morris, was supposed to spit on me. Poor old Aubrey ran out of saliva. And so Stephen Burkoff, who was playing a cop, said, don't worry, I've got some. He brought up the most hideous loogies. Stanley asked, can you get it on his nose? Burkoff said, yeah. We did so many takes, what with Stanley not accepting anything less than 100%. He wanted it to dribble down just right, to be totally humiliating. Obviously, I was a bit pissed off. Spit on the face, broken ribs, almost drowning. Yet the peak of horror for Malcolm was the scene when Alex undergoes the Ludovico technique. This is what the actor said. During our preparation, Stanley showed me a picture of an eye operation patient with lid locks on and asked me if I could have that done to me. Hell no, I said. So he brought in a doctor to anesthetize my eyes. But most eye operations are done with the patient lying on their back, not sitting up watching videos. When we shot it, the lid locks kept sliding off my eyelids and scratching my cornea. When the anesthetic wore off, I was in such pain I was banging my head against a wall. But Stanley was mainly concerned about when he would be able to get his next shot. You went through quite an ordeal, didn't you, whilst making it with the broken ribs, they say, during the re-education scene and almost drowning at one point. But the one that's yeah. the easiest was the scratch cornea for the iconic Ludovico technique scenes. How long mm -hmm. did you go blind for? And, and how much persuasion did you take to get back and finish shooting those scenes? A lot. He's a very persuasive man. I was a young actor. I knew this was going to change my life. I knew that this was, I had a feeling it would be an iconic experience, a movie, because I didn't realize I'd be talking about it 50 years later. I didn't want to do this I thing, especially when he asked me to redo it and he needed a big close up. And I went, no, I can't do it, Stanley. I was, my corneas were scratched. It was horrible. I don't want to do it. Get somebody else. You just need an eye. I said, get the stand-in. And the stand-in looked to me like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> no. And I said, sorry, John. Uh, didn't mean to put you in that. But um, in the end, I said, all right, I'll do it at the end of the film. I thought he'd forgotten about it. And we um, finished. And he, he goes, it's all set up for you to do. I went, you son of a bee. I went, you are kidding. He went, no, no, no. You said you'd do it. I'm holding you to it. I need the shot. I mean, honestly, it's debatable whether you need the shot. It's, I think it's nonsense. When I see it, I always cringe because I look as if I've aged like 20 years from the beginning, from the first ones to the end. 
So Kubrick's methods took a physical and mental toll on Malcolm McDowell, but did the actor resent the director for it? Malcolm McDowell's journey was arduous. Stop it, stop it, please, I beg you! Even though the actor has never spoken badly about the director, he's expressed the difficulty of the experience on multiple occasions. I was so exhausted by the time I finished that movie. It was exhausting, but I was in every frame of it. And for long, long hours, it was very physical and mental because I was also contributing to the script and, you know, all kinds of other stuff. So it was a real collaboration. That's Malcolm McDowell 50 years later, because right after the movie was completed, his feelings were a bit different. According to IndieWire, McDowell also talked about the bitterness he felt towards the movie and its huge popularity after making it. For the first 10 years after I made it, I resented it, McDowell said. I was sick of it. I didn't want to talk about the thing. I was over it. I said, look, I'm an actor. I got to play a great part. I'm moving on. Then I came to the realization that it was a masterwork and I was very, very much part of it. You may as well just accept it and enjoy it. Malcolm McDowell enjoyed not only the film, but also working with a genius like Stanley Kubrick and being on his select list of trusted actors. And there's not many actors he trusts, very few, very, very few. If he trusts you, then he'll go with you and you can do practically anything for him. Ultimately, McDowell considers his experience more than worth the challenge, mostly because he believes Kubrick's unique way of thinking and making cinema is the reason for Clockwork Orange's phenomenal success. It, look, it's the vision of Stanley Kubrick. God, he was one of the greatest directors that ever lived. I mean, how lucky was I to fall into this. What do you think? Is there a limit to what a director can do to achieve the perfect take? Let us know in the comments down below and see you next time. Pretty well, little brother. Pretty well. <laughs>